cold exposure, cold water, cold showers, cold weather. I get a lot of that here in Canada. Um, in the winter months, I don't so much need to take cold showers because I just step outside and that's my cold exposure. But let's delve into it. Let's uh, both share our experiences, benefits that either one of us receive. Um, yeah, let's get into it. That's awesome. I, I forgot yeah, you're in Canada too, because that's, yeah. that's, that's already cold. So that's a cold it's exposure a, in itself. <laughs> yeah, I've inadvertently been partaking in this since birth. But mm. the thing is, you know, in the summertime, it's, it's warm weather, it's pretty normal, plus 30 Celsius and above. So I guess that's, I could put that here. Um, my first, you know, interest in cold showers was really just to combat the heat in the summertime, right? You know, you're, you're maybe working on a hot summer day and you get home and you're just so hot, you can't cool off. So my first kind of instinct towards or first inclination towards cold showers was during those hot summer days just to cool off at night you know what i mean yeah no that's actually really true because i was gonna say is wasn't that is that more of like a leeway into your cold showers because it's already cold outside you're kind of already adapting a little bit in a way to be more prepared but then when you jump in it's like hold on this is a little different but not too bad <laughs> yeah well in winter like i i just don't do cold showers at all you know what I mean? Right. Even, even now after understanding the benefits and being very involved in it, I just, it's not something I've done, you know, like I've been so consistent since about March. Mm. Um, and that's totally aligned with when the weather starts to get warm here and going into winter again this year, I just don't see how I could keep it up. I don't think it's beneficial, right? There's the good amount of stress that your body goes into with the cold exposure but then on some level there's just like insanity right like if it's mm. winter it's freezing cold outside uh, minus 30 celsius you know is that's kind of like the coldest winter weather we get and funny enough around that range is when it actually aligns with fahrenheit so like minus 30 celsius becomes minus 30 fahrenheit i don't know if that's the exact um, temperature but somewhere that low it just becomes the same all around it's just bloody cold and when it's that cold, I mean, taking cold showers is just kind of a little too extreme, right? That, that's actually kind of interesting because, um, as you know, I've, throughout my YouTube, I've done like the Wim Hof 40-day challenge. And if, for anyone who doesn't know out there, Wim Hof, he's uh, known as the ice man, basically can withstand insane, insane temperatures that are like, it's negative. I, we don't even know. It's like, he's in there for <laughs> 20 minutes and it's absolutely wild. Like, that's yeah. what they call him the ice man. But just recently throughout this 40-day challenge that I did, I got a comment that said, well, if it's winter time, Jake, do you really have to take cold showers? Mm -hmm. And I thought about this. I'm like, that's actually a good question. Cause when I did the 40 day challenge, I didn't do it during the winter time. I just did it throughout the summer. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I didn't think about that. So I kind of thought, and I said, I guess you don't have to, but mm -hmm. if you do, it's even more of a test on the mind. If you think yeah. about it, it's already winter time. You're going to be obviously if you're in, if you're in your house, it's, you might have, you know, maybe heated up, it might be a little mm -hmm. warmer, but you're getting out and you're still in that environment where it's winter time, it's gonna be even colder. So if you want to actually look at it at a different perspective and say, this is a perfect opportunity for me to take time to enhance the cold exposure experience because it's winter. I thought about that. Yeah, that's totally true. And Wim Hof, I mean, yeah, he, he <laughs> lives in, in Holland, I think. And mm -hmm. you know, he's out there climbing mountains in his shorts. He doesn't, it's not a seasonal thing for him, right? It is cold exposure all year round. But he definitely does balance it with, with the heat, right? Mm. Like he does like maybe a 60-minute ice bath. I think he did that on his 60th birthday, which was this yeah. <laughs> year. And then, you know, he's showing like that's extreme. 60 minutes is pretty extreme. But afterwards, he goes into the sauna right there, right? So you definitely need that balance. Again, if it's cold weather out and your house really isn't that warm and you're just going to take cold showers – you're just you're gonna it's not gonna be good right you need to have that whether it be like your your house is heated up or you ideally it'd be amazing to have a sauna as well and you could do that back and forth exposure and that would be goals for sure <laughs> his i mean his setup is insane it's that oh, yeah. it's all it's all the wooden you know and i've seen it mm -hmm. you know it's something about that cold heat dip i don't know what it is i've only done like a little research and like kind of behind it but something right. with you know obviously blood change you know you're in that cold 
cold water if you're if you're as extreme as Wim Hof doing it for those yeah. 60 minutes and then jumping out into that sauna that perfect uh-huh. exchange is amazing and something I kind of want to add in here too is um is working out hmm. you know I've noticed that pre showers for a workout has been so benefit beneficial for me right if I'm if I'm waking up in the morning and then I'm getting right out of bed and I'm doing a little something like meditating first, a little journaling, mm-hmm. gratitude journaling. And then I'll go take a shower to prep myself, my mind, my body for working out. I find that my joints are a lot looser. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. I'm more, more prepared for that workout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also the, the after workout cold shower as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've always found that easier, easier to get into the cold when you're, you know, when, when you're already warmed up internally already. Right. And, and that's always, um, been, been an easier way to, to get into the cold. And I guess when I first started building this habit for myself, it was always after a workout, whether it be just something Mm -hmm. small, like just half an hour at home, push ups, jumping jacks, whatever, something that got my heart rate going prior to getting in that cold shower, because I would say that's probably the most discipline level that you, you can get to is, having the cold shower in the morning without having warmed up, you know, that, that takes definitely the most mental discipline to get in there. But once you do that, you are so prepped to take take on anything like a workout or whatever it is you're doing that day. That's actually pretty cool because I was just listening to a podcast. I'm not sure. I feel like you do. Do you know who Dr. Rhonda Patrick is? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Multi, yeah. Numerous podcasts with Joe Rogan, right? But yeah, Joe Rogan. I was listening to one of her, one of her podcasts about cold exposure and she, she was actually mentioning something about working out, you know, taking that cold shower after working out. Mm-hmm. And the one thing to be weary with is that to take that cold shower afterwards, you want to make sure it's something, if you're doing like an extreme workout that day, right? Mm-hmm. If you're doing like, which I don't really recommend, but it's like those two a days, you know, as football players do like the two a days, the extreme, they're morning and then the afternoon, they'll go mm-hmm. work out again. That's a perfect time to actually do the cold shower because it's more of a regeneration, right? Recovery mm-hmm. type type thing with the cold, with a cold shower hitting your body or a cold plunge is more ideal because right. you're submerging your whole body within that, you know, and just sitting there and basking, making sure you're focusing on that breath. But those mm-hmm. short workouts is something to be weary of. But if it's something like an intense, long workout, definitely look into that afterwards for that cold shower effect. Yeah, most definitely. Um, yet yeah, Rhonda Patrick, mm-hmm. from her I learned about the concept of heat shock proteins with, with yes. saunas as well. <laughs> yep. I would say that I really have yet to totally make um, use of, of saunas and that heat, intense heat exposure. Cause I mean, yeah, you could heat up the, the shower, get a pretty hot shower, but it's definitely not the same. Whereas cold exposure is more like accessible, right? And obviously they have saunas at the gym around here. And I think most places, You'll find a gym with a sauna, but it's not as easy to to take advantage of that as it is to just hop in the cold shower. But definitely something I want to um, just embrace more of as well. Something to add too. Um, I don't really know much about it, but there's heat shock proteins. There's actually cold shock proteins as well, right. which I didn't know. I just recently found out. Makes but, sense. Um, it does. Yeah, no, it really does. And mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things that we kind of don't like focus on a lot is that we can adapt right we we adapt in so many ways right we adapt Mm. learning how to play an instrument we adapt learning a new exercise Mm. the one thing we don't adapt is temperature regulation Mm. kind of think about it right we don't train ourselves to become you know adaptable to actual temperature but we just kind of fear it in a a way you know like cold we fear a lot of times and i think that's one of the things we kind of have to think about and kind of look at it at a different perspective when going into it and i kind of want to share um, a little background story about when the wim hof challenge you know Mm -hmm. when i first found out about this wim hof challenge on his instagram i was like oh this is pretty cool this is actually a perfect way to kind of excel on youtube as well because it's Mm -hmm. you know I'm doing a 40 day challenge and it's making me more inclined to post every single day. That was one of the important things. And Jack, I think that's how I met you, right? Yeah, you know, yeah you- for sure. man. I, I <laughs> right. saw that. And the consistency it was just like, yep. Respect. You, you, yeah. You posted on that, but that's the thing. When you made that first comment, I was like, Oh, now I feel like I'm going to upset this one person. If I don't mm. post, right. <laughs> if I don't get into that shower, right. If I don't do yeah. that, then I, I'm going to upset someone out there that's watching it. And that actually made me more inclined to take those cold showers. Mm. So 
the neat thing about this is that I was a little weary at first because I have something known as Raynaud's disease. Mm. And basically what Raynaud's is, is just like cold hands and cold feet. You just constantly throughout the, like throughout the whole entire year, right? Summertime, my hands are always cold every si wow. single time, right? They're white, they'll be pale white. So I was kind of a little weary. I'm like, this is kind of contradictive of <laughs> what's what I'm about to do, right? Cold uh -huh. on cold, <laughs> this is going to be weird. So going into it, I was like, all right, at first it was awful. Right. I didn't like, mm. I didn't like it at all. Mm. First, probably 10 days. I was like, uh, I'm trying to work my way around it. I'm starting warm. I'm turning it down a little bit cold. I'm doing all these things. But as I groaned over time, right, as I got more adaptable to it, I'm like, Oh, this is actually kind of easy. I want to stay in here longer. <laughs> this is fun. Right. Mm. I mean, you experience it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Most so definitely. It, yeah. it ties in also to, to just that limitless mindset, right? Mm. Like why do we put these limits on ourselves? Like, why is it that whatever temperature is too cold and then whatever other temperature is too hot? Like who puts those boundaries on us, right? Like it doesn't really make logical sense. There's, I mean, to an extent, right? Obviously too hot is too hot, too cold, but you know, it, it isn't so, so binary as, as we really make it seem, you know, and you always got to be inside and climate controlled, all that stuff. It can't be good long term, considering that, as humans, we've made it this far by being able to endure, you know, radically different and varying temperatures. So at this point, collectively, we're all like sheltering so much and being just one temperature, you know, yeah. it, I'm sure there's going to be some negative effect of that. That's just unforeseen by our short sightedness to always be comfortable with our temperature. All the time, you know, we, we grew up as wilders outside, right? <laughs> that, was our, exactly. that was our base land. Now we're, now we're inside a house. So to kind of revert that way to change is, mm -hmm. is huge and something that I think we should definitely take uh, note of. But Jack, I kinda, I'm kind of curious, what are some ways that like you, you can give people tips to going into taking that first mm -hmm. plunge or that fo first cold shower, right? They, maybe they haven't even, right? You know, when they accidentally turn the shower off, like, oh my gosh, it's cold. Let me just turn it off real quick. Like, uh -huh. what are some ways that, because I get that on my YouTube lab. They're like, yeah. I, had, I had this one person that was saying like, you know, hey, I, I, it's not working for me. Like, I don't know how to, how do I get into doing this? Like, mm -hmm. just that first step. Yeah, well, definitely, you know, focus on, on, that, on that warmth after or before. You know what I mean? Like if it is winter where you are, that's probably not the best time to start taking cold showers. So if you do live in a cold place in winter time, then just embrace the cold when you're out walking a bit more to start with that. Um, if it's summertime where you are, then take advantage of the summer heat. When it's a hot summer's day, maybe go out in the morning, get some sun exposure, warm your body up, and then go into the cold shower. That helps so much right and then afterwards as well go outside and get some sun exposure to warm back up again because there have been times where you know there's definitely a proper timing and all these sorts of things because occasionally i will take a cold shower where it kind of messes me up for a bit right i'm jittery and shivering mm. for a little while after and to to combat that i, I gotta go outside and, and warm up get some sun you know so they're there's definitely some things to, to think about with that, but you know, just, just focus on being warm before and after, I guess, you yeah. know, cause you gotta be practical. It, it's hard to get cold like that. And you can't just expect to go have a cold shower and then come out and just be normal. You gotta like warm your body up again. Right. It's, it's about, I guess, getting the cold exposure to get the benefits of like resetting your mind, resetting your body. Um, your your cells just radically you know going all over the place and getting this cold exposure shaking things up in your body but then afterwards it's totally okay to warm back up right the goal isn't to be shivering and freezing all day it's just to in that moment have that radical experience of being so cold that your whole body is affected and your cells are moving around, your neurons are firing differently. I don't know what all goes on in your body, but it definitely changes you in that moment, right? And then afterwards, it's totally okay to warm back up again. I think that's probably the best. You don't wanna be like freezing all day. Um, so I, I would say that, you know, just focus on the moment, being cold for just a few minutes. It's not a matter of being freezing and uncomfortable all day. It's just that one little moment 
to reset your brain, reset your mind, your body. And then you, you have those benefits all day long, right. Of, of just maybe being more focused. Um, you know, you've, you've talked about this in your videos, you feel more disciplined with other things, right? You're, it's easier to like say yes to something else that is hard after you've done that cold shower, you have that under your belt to start the day off. Right. That's true. And you hit it right on the nail. It's, it's presence. That is right. one of the biggest thing. It's being present. Cause when you're present, that helps with every other aspect outside of that cold shower. So I just took one this morning actually. And I, after that 40 day challenge, I've been off and on, right? Sometimes I'll have mornings, obviously like we all do where we sure. don't take one, we'll skip them, you know, a couple of days in a row or whatnot, but you get right back on course. So I've had this just experience today, this morning of presence. And when I turn on the shower right now, what I do is I just jump right in and mm -hmm. I just turn it on while I'm in there. So it's more of like that powerful effect. Mm -hmm. And at first you're like, you, your mind starts going every which way, right? It starts panicking. Like, Oh my gosh, like what's going on right now. <laughs> but that's where presence actually is one of the biggest things because mm. if we focus on that limitless, like you just mentioned, if we focus on switching our mind and saying, no, just this little bit of time right here, I'm going to enjoy it. This is not bad at all. Let yeah. me just enjoy the moment, the experience and watch what happens. It's crazy. Mm. I've had times where throughout that 40 day challenge where I switched my mindset and I've enjoyed it and stayed in so much longer. That was yes. just one of the wonderful things. <laughs> yeah. 100% man. Um, and it really all does come down to just just your mindset, the way you're approaching it, what you're thinking about when when doing that, right? Like if you don't see the potential benefits for yourself, then why are you going to force yourself to do this thing, right? It's same with exercise, right? Like maybe maybe you think you look okay, you don't necessarily want to improve yourself physically, and you think you're kind of healthy. So if you really don't see the complete benefits, you're not going to be motivated to go and do it, right? And a lot of it is, yeah, you can like read the science, you can learn like, okay, yeah, this is actually good for me, this and that. But I think mainly you just have to really believe in it yourself, right? Mm -hmm. The science, cause science is so tricky. You know what I mean? Like you can, with diet, for example, you can read something that pulls you this way, eat more saturated fat, and then you read other stuff that says, you know, no, that's bad for you, eat more, you know, no, no fat, right? There's just so, even today, right? There's, there's it's so much pulling a different, plan. yeah. <laughs> and so what it really comes down to is what you believe in, right? And mm -hmm. if you really believe in what you're doing is making you healthier, making you smarter, making you better, then that's going to be the motivation. And then if you can, like with cold exposure, read all the health benefits, then it's just going to solidify your beliefs, give you that external validation of what it is that you're doing, right? You follow guys like Wim Hof. It just mm -hmm. makes you believe in it even more, but it all has to start with you believing in it yourself, right? Like, yes, this is going to benefit me. This is going to make me better. going to make me superhuman, going to make me limitless. You got to have those beliefs. And with that, you know, all the health benefits that are scientifically proven and stuff, that's just going to be a bonus kind of thing, right? You're like, yeah, yeah I already know. I feel it. I believe in this, right? all about intent, baby, all about intent, it's setting that in, setting that, it's really setting that intent uh -huh. about, Hey, this will help me. And like you said, you know, the science, the science is tricky, but if you yeah. read those, like those little messages that are like, Oh, this can help you with better hair. There's stuff like weight loss, stuff like all, all different yeah. kinds of things. But the thing we have to keep in mind, and I say this a lot in my YouTube videos is that everybody's body is different because mm. we're all different, right? Same thing with dieting. It might not work for someone else. It might work for you, but it, might not work for another individual. That's the same thing with cold showers, but it's setting that intent going into it saying, okay, I'm going to plan this. And I know that this is going to work for me. I'm going to yeah. feel great afterwards. I'm mm -hmm. going to have a, the rest of my day is going to be excellent. I'm going to be focused, right? All different kinds of things. And that's, yeah. that's one of the important things. Um, I think we should talk a little bit about, you know, breath work, how important that kind of correlates with for cold sure. showers. Yeah. To me, I, I believe I, like kind of discovered breath work before cold exposure mm -hmm. and maybe I discovered them at the same time, but you know, going through a breathing exercise, you're, you're less resistant to that. Right. And that is something that you can do in, you know, doesn't matter if it's winter out, doesn't matter if it's summer out, that the weather doesn't affect that, right. It, nothing really affects it. You don't have to even have access to a shower, have access to anything. That's something that you can do yourself whenever. So, that is 
the most accessible, right? But for me has led to cold exposure and other sorts of things that seem to go hand in hand. I mean, if you follow Wim Hof's story, he kind of explains the way he came across understanding that cold exposure is beneficial or, or rather the way he came across the, the benefits of breathing in, in the way that he does is by doing cold exposure and recognize, recognizing that the first thing that happens is your breathing changes, right? And when you focus on your breathing and the cold exposure, it helps. And that's what kind of led him to understanding the breath work. And then, you know, the rest is kind of history with his breathing techniques. Um, so I, I think they, they go hand in hand most definitely, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that's the thing I kind of tried to grasp was his breathing technique itself within the challenge. Um, and I got some questions on this too. It's like, I think I'm going to make another video explaining it specifically because it's into the stomach, right? Into the chest, mm -hmm. into the head. And it's that, that specific pattern that creates that motion of the breath. And what I noticed is that, you know, like you said, when you jump into the shower, it's that quick, sudden change. You know, you have to do something with your breath. You have to mm -hmm. take control. And what's happening is that your sympathetic Right, your sympathetic nervous system is activating because it's that fight or flight. When you get hit by that water, you're like, whoa, you're like, what's going on? You, you, don't, you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. That fight or flight. So what Wim Hof is trying to teach you, especially with the big let go of carbon dioxide, right? When we do the in, in, in for what, 30, 25, 30 breaths, and then we let go of all of our, ox our, all of our, our carbon dioxide, right? we let it out of our body and what we hold at the bottom because that's one of the main things he tries to have us do is hold at the bottom trying to activate our parasympathetic nervous system so our rest and digest so he's trying to calm our body down when that cold water is hitting us so we're like we're relaxed right we're in that present moment we're not we're not freaking out in that fight or flight sense and then we breathe in hold at that top which is it's, it's insane how like that actually how, how your breath can really take over and control a situation like cold exposure uh-huh and right. it, it excites me so much man like discovering these things like really makes you feel more in control as a human being. And that may sound kind of corny, but man, like it's, it's not hard to feel out of control with everything. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, maybe your finances are messed up or even just with this COVID so much in the world was going on and it's, you really can feel out of control and maybe lost, but you know, you, you start doing some breath work and it just radically changes your state. Right. And mm. it's just like so powerful. And then you start to, really think about the mind and what the mind is really capable of, right? You know, I've had experiences with, with, you know, following the, the breath work where afterwards you just feel total bliss, right? And it's like, wow, my mind is totally clear. And Absolutely. then it becomes addictive, right? It's like, it's like the effect that you, you always wanted when, you know, perhaps drinking alcohol or maybe smoking weed or doing something like in high school when you're with your friends or going to a party. It's like you're pursuing something. You want to feel different. You want to feel um, blissful or whatever it may be. It's, but you know, it's never attainable through some substance, even with coffee, for example, right? You want mm -hmm. to drink that coffee to feel motivated, to feel um, alert and focused, but it's never quite complete right it's always fleeting but with with you know breath work and with cold exposure that those feelings that you get like that's true you know presence true focus um bliss i don't know what the right words are to describe it but it's so amazing and it really becomes addictive something that you want to just continue to pursue more and more and if you aren't doing these things after a while you're not doing breath work. You're not working out. You've stopped these things. You stopped healthy eating. You stopped cold exposure. You really just, you crave those again. You're like, oh man, I can't wait to go have a cold shower and, you know, to eat a healthy meal or maybe do a little bit of fasting. You know, that's another <laughs> aspect. All these things that just make you feel so great and they're healthy as well. And it just, it seems like, I don't know, like, ah, just, it's like, collectively humanity's discovered these certain things that you do and you utilize in unison proper sleep all these different things you you discover like the optimal human experience kind of thing 
Mm, that's powerful. You know, Wim Hof called Wim Hof. What he calls it is high on your own supply. Yeah. It's that it's that high on your own supply. Right. And I've noticed that, you know, after, after a shower, I'll literally just be sitting there or lying down and just doing his breath work. And then over time I'll be like that bliss, that bliss yes. feeling of just like, wow, like what even is like anything you're just like chilling there. Like <laughs> you just feel amazing. You feel in his world high on your own supply, mm-hmm. but that's what actually kind of got me more into mindfulness is like breath work and how that can like really expand and develop your mind itself. And how you can just take control over your mind in a situation yeah. where you're anxious, you know, you don't feel good. And then you just sit down and you're like, let me just focus on my breath because breath is a stress stimulus, right? It's how we're, we notice and take actually note of how we're breathing throughout the day. We can stop and be like, oh, let me just do this little breathing technique, this box breathing in for which Ben Greenfield talks a lot about, mm-hmm. about practicing this little breathing technique can actually revert my whole entire mind to feeling better. It's, yeah. it's crazy what our breath can do, especially for the shower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it does seem to just go hand in hand, all these things, Ben, you know, like it's mm-hmm. hard to, it's hard to practice cold exposure and breath work and then eat McDonald's or drink yeah. Coca-Cola. Like it's hard to do that. They just don't really go hand in hand. One promotes the other in terms of like, you know, it'll, encourage you to eat healthier and then just all these things because I think it brings a lot of awareness to your body you know what I mean like if you just have a totally junk diet and you're meditating and you're doing this breath work and you have more self-awareness you're going to recognize like whoa something's really off with me like you you'll start to feel those effects whereas if if you're just watching TV all the time, if you're having hot, warm showers because they're comfortable, you never give yourself the opportunity to notice like, oh, wait a minute, I think my diet's making me feel in this negative way, right? Because you're always kind of dumbing down any sort of awareness of your body or your mindset or anything like that. Maybe you have all these negative thoughts, right? But you never notice them because you're always sort of, um, you know, dumbing down your, 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 your awareness of, of your own thought patterns. Yeah. You're pretty much stuck in this little pattern, right? You're in this same day to day thing. You're doing the same things every single day and you're not seeking discomfort. Mm -hmm. That's what cold showers does. It makes you seek discomfort, get out of your comfort zone and experience something new, right? Who does that on a daily basis, (laughs) day to day? And I'm talking about one time thing. I'm Uh talking about doing it for a straight week, a straight month and experiencing like, wow, I just did that. And then you kind of, you go to other parts of your life and you're like, if I can do this, if I can start my day with a cold shower and step out of my comfort zone, something I've never done before, what else can I do? Let me, let me take on this challenge now. Let me, yeah. and then it just, oh my gosh, it just makes you, you can see like it just makes you want to do more and more and more and you keep on going. And that's just, that's the whole thing about seeking discomfort. And I love it. Mm. It's, it's amazing. And then you get into the truly limitless mindset, which I'm mm. sure we could go on about as well, but maybe that's a topic of another podcast, another, yeah. uh, another collaboration. Um, it's, it's hard to wrap up a conversation like this because it is such an exciting topic and you can just kind of rant on and on about all the personal benefits and how this led to that. And then now I'm better at this area of my life because of that. So I, I guess to attempt to wrap this up, what is... Um, I guess just what is what is one thing that you're looking to add to your life to seek discomfort in a new way, some new thing, mm. whether it be working out, diet, something that you're looking to add to your daily regime of seeking discomfort, getting out of your comfort zone. Amazing question. And without, you know, leaving behind the the whole cold showers and everything, something different that I've been doing a lot recently is kind of communicating to other people in person right and i think the harder Mm. things now especially with covid and everything going on is that we're now confined we're now are just we we're given this opportunity to stay inside right Mm. and that's kind of good to inhibit a lot of these social patterns now so what i'm trying to do is every time i'm out giving that smile to someone right giving Mm. saying hey how you doing that simple thing right it and it takes a lot just to say hey how you doing to someone some random person you don't even know Mm. but i feel like that simple little switch can change a person's day that smile can change a person's day right and that in my mind is seeking discomfort right you could just look at someone and smile and that actually takes a reaction into their mind and makes them Mm. smile as well right Mm -hmm. so it's all about going up to someone like hey how you doing how's your day you know just we're just saying hi that kind of 
discomfort in a way changes myself in my own mind. Damn, that's powerful. That's crazy that you said that. That really resonates with me, man. It's always something been in the back of my mind and something that I've struggled with just being mm. more introverted. It's always a little tough. And I guess I'll throw in a story here. So I was spending some time with, with family recently and I have this one aunt who's a little bit crazy. <laughs> she's kind of, um, you know, she, she looks a bit more fringe, right? She's kind of in without being judgy. She's just, she's very different, but there's something about her that's so amazing is that she seems to lack any, um, any doubts about like speaking to others. Like, so for example, we're in the store and I was ahead of her in line to pay for my stuff, just getting groceries and, you know, normal interaction. Okay. Thank you. Paid for it. And then she comes up and then immediately to the, to the clerk or the teller, the cashier, my aunt goes, Oh, you look beautiful. And then the girl really smiled and she's like, Oh, thank you. He's like, oh, and your teeth are so nice. And she's like, oh, well, I had braces. And she just totally lit up. Whereas when I went through, it was just like a normal, like, okay, thank you. Yep, okay. Mm. And my aunt just has this ability to just, you know, I wouldn't have said that to her. I would have felt awkward saying, oh, you look beautiful to the cashier, right? But my aunt was just able to just say it and she really doesn't care. And she'll say that to anyone. And, oh, thank you so much. Thank people. And just really kind of over the top. But it's very very interesting because I think most people are, are totally the other way. Most people are just very basic, not smiling and not communicating very properly. So for someone like her to be really over the top is something to, I guess, just take inspiration from, you know? Yeah. So. And you know, I'm glad, I'm glad that resonated with you and that stuck with you because John, you know what she did right there, right? What she did was she not only affected that person, that individual, but that it was a chain effect. That one mm. thing she told that person now is telling millions of other people, right? Because that mm. one moment, right? And that's what I believe during this whole time right now, what we need the most of is that one little impact on another individual so we can constantly spread that positivity, that smile. And that's what I like about the discomfort aspect currently in my mind. It's amazing. Yeah, most definitely. I love it, man. That's a great, great little tidbit to wrap this up with. Um, you and I both encourage everyone listening or watching this to go and seek discomfort in whatever way that they can. And I think it's, it's really good that you tied it into that because it doesn't have to be the cold shower. It doesn't have to be running up a mountain. It could just simply be smiling at someone, telling someone they're beautiful, not being worried about seeming like a weirdo, just genuinely yeah. meaning it, <laughs> you know, and really everyone is beautiful and in, in their own way, right? There's, I don't think anyone who isn't. So it's not an awkward thing to say, but it takes a little bit of discomfort to muster up that energy. Not at all. One word, one simple word. Most Thank definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks so much for this, man. I really hope that this resonates with a lot of people and um, we're going to continue to share this message. It's the only way, <laughs> right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Thank you so much for yeah. having me on. I mean, I, I greatly appreciate that I can use my voice to kind of spread, spread it to others, you know, because that's one of the main things, right? As we, as we get knowledge, we want to spread awareness and spread it to other people. We don't just want to have it to ourselves. We want to share, right? Most definitely. The growth mindset. We yes. all have limitless potential. And with mm -hmm. that, thank you all for listening. And great to finally collaborate with you, Jake. Of course. Hey, many more, many more to come. Most definitely.